Hello card fighters, Chris here with Vanguard Central Academy and we have a mulligan video so I'm going to be using uh, my gold paladin deck to show you guys that. Shout out to Moogleman for asking uh, to make a video on mulligans, he's getting back into the game. You probably already get back into it by now because I'm a little slow with these, but he asked about mulligans. Um, and so we're gonna go over probably just the basics. There's a lot of depth that you can go to and you can figure out your own strategy. What's the, what you think is the best? Personally, I don't think there's like a best, there's probably a best answer in terms of like statistical things and like what you should send back and if you're hoping to get blah, 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 blah. But I think there's a lot of like strategy dependent thing, deck dependent things. And, and so we're just gonna go over the basics, um, how I learned and Hopefully it will help some of you guys out who struggle with mulliganing or you know, always find themselves with bad hands. There's a chance mulliganing could be your issue. So um, we'll get this guy out of here. He's not mulliganing for mulliganing. So for me, um, ever since I started playing, I always just thought, well, yeah, yeah, like I, I, I went all anime, right? I was like, all right, all I need, all I need is my grade one. My grade two and my grade three. That's all I care about. And the other two cards don't really matter as long as I get my grade one, two, and three. So like, if I have, um, I got three cards there. I will flip them over. These don't really matter. But if I got a one and a two, I'm gonna send back everything but those. If I had, you know, one and three, I'm gonna send out everything. But though it doesn't really matter, like what cards they are, if they're other grade twos. Um, like if I got a hand like this, you know, one, two, two, and two zeros, I keep my one and two, and then hopefully I get my three. Same goes for the other ones. Like if I'm missing my two, I got the one and three. I'll keep those. Or like if I have all triggers, I just have a one, like a two. All triggers, I'm just gonna send it all back and get the two. That's how I mulligan. Um, not saying it's the best or anything, that's just what I do. I like to have one, two, three. I like to not worry about it. I like not to um, take chances. Um, if I already have it in my hand, I'm just gonna, get, I'm just gonna leave it that way. Um, but there are definitely different strategies, and there's a lot of you know nuances that come in depending on your deck, depending on um, you know, with these new stride based ones and stride fodders. So, like, right, we have stride fodders in the game now, which can search out your main grade three. Um, so, it's possible you get a hand. Um, so, I run a gut go on my deck because I think it's silly. Um, so, it's possible that I get a hand like this. I got my grade one, I got two grade twos, I got a trigger, and I got my non Gurgwit grade three. Um, so in this case, I w lately I've been sending this grade 3 back, um, just because it's just not a good ride. If it was an Ezel, I would probably, like if I was playing Ezel here, I'd probably keep the Ezel. But since Gut Gall, you do not want to ride him, I send like everything but my 1 and 2 back. That's what I've been doing lately. It gets interesting like when you have mulligans like this. Where you've got your wrong grade three, but you've got the stride fodder. So like if you draw another grade one, you could potentially bop that. And so like I would probably do this. So I still have one, two, three, and I'll hope to get another one. But you know, I'll hopefully you know I'll, I'll have all my stuff anyway, no matter what. Um, but you could get like a little risky. You could take away the two, um, which is probably a safe bet in this deck, given I run a lot of grade two. I'd be like, mm, that's that could be a good idea, and then I'm more likely to get another grade one, so that I can swap out my good goal. Um, you could just keep it the same, just take out good goal and hope that he comes back as a Kirk Whip. There's a lot of ways you could do it. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. Um, maybe in terms of probabilities, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I just go with whatever I'm feeling like. Um, but really, the, the main rule you want to stick with is one, two, three. Um, so for me, 
I got the one, two, and three. Maybe I don't get to swap it out for Gurgwit, but I have a three. And you know, worst comes to worst, I have a three. I'm not gonna be falling behind trying to stay at grade two when I can't. So that's that's really my my philosophy on things. I've seen. Um, I guess another interesting thing is if you have you have like only right. You have you don't have a grade one. So in this case, I've seen. I you know we've already we've already talked about my strategy. My strategy is keep the two and three, send the rest back. But I do know of people who send the three back as well because they're more okay with like being stuck on the grade two than be not having a grade one. So just by sending the grade three back, maybe they get a bit unlucky and they don't draw the grade three back in time. But they're increasing their chances of getting that grade one. So, you're gonna go ahead and increase your chances to get the grade one. So, you got the one, two, and then you'll try to get the three. Hopefully, it comes back to you in the draw. If it doesn't, oh well. It's better to have the, to, to you know, increase my chances of getting the grade one than um, just not have a grade one. Um, so, I think that's, that's an interesting strategy. I don't personally use it. But it's one to keep in mind. Um, I'm not sure that there's there's too much else. Um, obviously, if you're a rush deck, you don't really care about going to grade three. You could um, what do you, get here? you could just send the, like these back just to get a better rush going. That's a definitely a possibility. If you have early card draw, that's also a possibility. You could do that. Um, a lot of it comes down to what deck you're playing. How aggressive you want to be, how defensive you want to be, how safe you want to be, um, and things like that. So, my advice, anyone who's beginning out having trouble deciding what to mulligan, I would say stick the anime. Um, just go one, two, three, and whatever you end up with, just keep one, one of what you need and send the rest back. That has been pretty solid for me. Um, I'm definitely an advocate of that method of just keeping what you need, sending back the rest, trying to get that last one or the other two, whatever it is. Um, and just start there. If you start there, you can kind of figure out what you do like, what you don't like about that method. Um, and maybe you become one of those people who they get, they get the no grade ones and then you decide, you know what, there's been a lot of times where I wish I had to, like, I do this, I do what Chris told me, I send back, I keep the two and the three, and I don't get the grade one. It happens to me all the time. I'm tired of not getting the grade one. Well, don't just be like, well, Chris told me to do this, so I'm just going to listen to him. If you really think that it's, if you think that it's better to send this back, to try to get the grade one, you don't mind staying on grade two, especially if you have a strong early game deck like Sanctuary Guard, or I don't actually know how to do Mulligan in that deck because it's very rush based. You might want to send the three back anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't really care about getting the grade three as much because I have a strong grade two game. So I'd much rather get the grade one. I'm going to start sending the grade threes back in this situation. So that's, you know, that's another option too. But just to reiterate, the strategy I would suggest with is just keep one of what you need. Whether you got the two, the one and the two, you got the one and the three, or you got the two and the three, or I guess one of each, right? I would keep those um, and then send the rest back. That's my tried and two strategy. That's how I'm mulligan. And I hope it helps you for those of you who are getting back into the game, getting new players in the game, trying to figure out how they should mulligan. I, I'm an advocate of stay with the anime and just try to get what you need. Don't overthink it. Just keep keep what you got and send back the rest. And it should all work out. Um, at least it normally works out for me. Um, I see people de-assisting a lot more than myself, it seems. So... I can't say it's bad, um, but they are definitely different strategies. You can try out, like I mentioned previously, and yeah, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys learned something about mulliganing, how I mulligan. 
Um, you can probably take a guess if you play against me now, like, oh, he only kept two cards. Or like, skip three cards. That means he's got the one, two, three. You're probably right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you're subscribed for more content like this. Comment down below if you have any questions. Tell me what your mulligan strategies are. I want to know what else is out there. I'm sure there's plenty of people who mulligan completely differently. Um, you know, one one example just to throw it out there is a friend of mine uh, who played. He plays deep police. He just mulligans all his non-grade ones basically. I don't know if he gives triggers, but he, he'll move again all the non-grade ones and just try to like draw into Laurel and all grade ones, and then just like <laughs> cheese people with Laurel. Um, that's that's a strategy. It works pretty well for him, so I can't complain. Yeah. But yeah, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, helps out a lot. Let's see, you already said comments down below about your Mulligan strategies. Uh, thanks to all the patrons on Patreon for helping support this content. Really appreciate all of it. And yeah, keep on learning, keep on having fun. And I'll see you in another video. <laughs>